Hello, everybody. Welcome in. This is uh, so exciting. We're, <laughs> we're making characters in Gubat Banwa 1.5. We are going to be playing through the Sword Devil module, but not before creating characters in the most recent update for the system. Makapatag is here again. The system creator is here again. Uh, so I'm freaking excited. I, nothing else to say other than, you know, we're going to have like a nice chill stream today. And if you want to get started with Gubat Banwa, if you have questions about the system, character creation, this is, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Um, Wax, feel free to take it away. All right. Yeah. So um, good evening from Araneta Center Cubao. <laughs> a very specific place in, in the Philippines. Um, yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, my name is Wax. That comes from Joaquin. A very Spanish name. That's my Spanish grandfather's name. So I just call myself Wax because it sounds more native. Um, it's better than my other name. Other names like Kyle, right? The white ass name, you know? So <laughs> it is correct. <laughs> You just call me Wax, you know. Um, or Makapatag. Makapatag is, is my handle. Um, I made, we made Gubat Manwa. Um, and as of right now, it's still going through its Kickstarter. Ooh, it has approximately six days left as of uh, today, as of Friday. Um, and we, we've done pretty well. We are at 70K. We've reached our second stretch goal which means our everyone will have access very soon, the backers will have access actually, to the first few like parts of the Flowers Over the Lumat, which is a big sort of uh, campaign. When I was talking about um, like organized play for Govet Manua on Twitter. Um, and that's what I plan on using. And that's what I'm planning on, on getting Govet Man, um Flowers Over the Lumat for. So it's split to two, three chapters. It's going to cover Legends um, 0 to 3, and then 4 to 6, and then 7 to 8, right? So big, 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 like, it's our it's our, it's our, our little big adventure. It's our keep on the shadow fell. If it were, I don't know how many would get that reference. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, so... Before we start, I guess it'll be really super cool if we can get like everyone to introduce themselves first uh, before we we before I start rambling about Gubat Manwa, right? <laughs> and then introducing it to everyone. <laughs> oh, that um, was I, yeah, that was really <laughs> the task. Yeah, exactly. It's your job. Um, yeah, but uh, but but please welcome our beautiful beautiful players who. Who played with us already? Uh, last game we played Shattered Steel. How about you start it off, Julie? Sure. Yeah. Hey, everybody. You can call me Julie, Julian, or Julie CL. Um, I am. This is this is my this is my channel. This is my home. You're in my house. Um, and uh, Gubat Banwa was a very important uh, drop the die discovery for me as a uh, diaspora Filipino living in. The U.S. just understanding so much more about Southeast Asian culture, getting connected with the community, which is super active on Discord. So if you're not there yet, you absolutely should be. Um, Twitch streamer, actor, writer, and as of the last like year to six months, promoter of independent TTRPGs, and uh, really, it's it, it's it's nice. It's nice seeing the creativity of so many people and. Uh, all of the the lack of limits around people's imagination and how it can get out there. So super stoked to be here. Um, we can pass to Shadow next. Great, I have to follow that up. Okay, hi everybody, <laughs> I'm Shadow. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I do things in the TTRPG space and I've been trying to really focus on um, non D and D and indie TTRPG stuff. So obviously when Julie was like, hey, you want to check out this really awesome system? I was like, heck yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> so that's how we ended up here. I do things um, here on Twitch on my own channel. Um, otherwise, there's the socials where you'll find all of my other projects, <laughs> which are sometimes many. <laughs> do I get a popcorn somebody? Am I just going to send it over to somebody? Take take the reins. Yeah, you got this. Oh, okay. 
Um, well, rolling a dice. And it's going to be Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Matt, he, him pronouns. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited to play again. Oh my gosh, this is like my new favorite system. And so I'm just so jazzed. And um, oh my goodness, you can find me everywhere as improv and RPG. I do like videos about um, using improv and D&D stuff. So um, and all, all manner of TTRPG stuff. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me again. And I'll pass it over to Danielle. Hi. Um, do I have my mic on? Yes, my name is Daniel, uh, and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I'm really super stoked and excited to be here. Uh, I've been obsessed with uh, our last session, uh, sessions. It was just so much fun. It just gave gave me the right amount of drama, crisis, and 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 <laughs> punchiness that I needed. Uh, and since then, uh, since then, I've been I've been so happy and excited to see how how this Kickstarter went. Wax, this is this is fantastic. Uh, I think it's it's extremely well deserved. Um, this is this is one of the most the, the freshest systems and and the most interesting games I've I've played in a long time. And, and this is uh, I'm I'm just gonna be here as many times as you all decide we want to play together because i just loved it and very excited to see more people playing also danielle made the overlay yes yeah it's so good it's beautiful. oh yes that's a, it's like the minimum i could do for y'all uh for julie for hosting this there's like 120th gubat bangwa sessions per week um and False, and thank you that's what that's what it feels. That's what it feels like. So I, I feel like you know, uh, what, what, uh, you're that you're streaming Gubad Banwa. Like there's there's an alternate Julie just streaming Gubad Banwa. Um, if only, times. if only, I would so much <laughs> rather be doing that than what I'm actually doing day to day. Customer <laughs> service is fine. That's but that's I'd rather that's game. Awesome. So yeah, uh, really really excited to see where this gets us. Heck yeah! Um, awesome. Yeah, walks. Take it away. That's so cool. All right, no. Um, yeah, actually, I, I was about to interject real quick a while ago. That I saw Matt's, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Matt, right? I saw yeah. Matt's, like, um, short, like, YouTube short, where he mentioned Gubat Manwa. Yeah. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> look, mom, look, mom, we made it. Well, not my mom. You made it on Improv and RPG's YouTube channel. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool i searched up like one night i had the idea of searching up gubat banwa on tiktok and and then i think i think matt uh, i think improv and rpg has a tiktok account right yeah you, you posted it on there so i was mm -hmm. like whoa and then i reposted it and i sent it to everyone check Hell this yeah. shit out guys this is me <laughs> this, Thank this you. matt matt's 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 my angel you know like come on. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Cool. Um, all of you have played Gobat Mano before, so you know how this shindig goes. So um let's we you know, it's pretty chill. Maybe I'll, I'll put in some like you know development ideas and stuff like that. Um like behind the scenes knowledge. But for now, let's let me give you guys a bit of a, a refresher. Gubat Banwa. This word, these words stand for battle and realm, warring or war and nation. The four of you will be playing what is known as Kadungana, right? You are larger than life warriors who must face the consequences of their violence. You are the cavalry, the wandering swordsmen, the tide turners, the knights errant, the ones to call in darkest night. 
you will be romping through a setting, an archipelago that is intensely inspired by the stories of Southeast Asia, by the cultures that we have since lost and wish to celebrate, even, even if it be just their shadows. For the people that don't know what RPGs are, so you play this role playing game, so you play a role. And Gubat Bangla is specifically a martial arts tactics and war drama tabletop RPG. So its mechanics revolve around moving your little boys around the chess, not chess, around the grid. <laughs> um, as, as, as we like to call it, it's chess with a story or like, or like chess with dialogue, right? And it's war drama because it's it expects the kadulanan to be you know larger than life they are petty and even more so like oh my character is jealous because you chose her to the dance instead of me and now i'm gonna kill your servant because of it <laughs> stuff like that that's how <laughs> that's how dramatic we want that's how dramatic our characters are and and unlike some other kinds unlike other kinds of rpgs this is completely in genre and then the mechanics enforce this so to play a character that is putting your your warband in danger because of their pettiness, that's that's good that you are playing Gubat Mata. So now you, the four of you, you are Kadunganan, but that's nothing special. The gods of the trees and the mountains have See more of your kind than you have seen blades of grass. They grant you power, sure, through your incantations, and you harness ancient blasphemies with your sorcery, but that is nothing to them. What does make them interested is the fact that your footfalls herald the end. The festival of the longest night arrives of the Adawa year 1001. The time of violence is now. Decide the fate of the next world. Next world. Even the gods and the spirits shall revel in this festival. There is no more time for hesitation. Gubat Banwa comes to fulfill its name. Where will you be at the end of the world? Now choose your conviction, Kadunganan, and light your flame of fawn. Guided by your rumination, you must change the world. Death, harmony, power, hegemony, empire, wealth, annihilation, become God King to change Gubat Manu's destiny or tear all God Kings down to create something different. Unsheath your sword and then raise it. Do not forget to cut. A sword is used for cutting. Your only recourse would be Kadunganan is violence unto glory. So before we move on, as Kadunganan, here are a few things you have to drill into your skull where really you need these these are very important uh, principles to have um, as a Kadungan you are bound by honor passion and conviction to fight across Gubat Banwa and fulfill your duty you are a warrior a knight Kadungan means honor or honorable as a Kadungan you are able to transfer your blade to those that pay better yet choose love and honor over all else you act with care and piety, moving in such a way that can damage your reputation, can cause you to lose honor. A kodonganan without honor is a true villain. Be rambunctious, be gallivant, but be mindful always. And you solve things through violence. Though you must, you almost always prefer not to, if things rise to the blade, you are second to none. If you would meet Batala on the road, you will kill him. No fire wishes alive, the dark illuminated. You are born, yet you are not yet Kadunganan. How can you be? Kadunganan are forged. Like blades, the nature of the world is that it acts and you react. The world acts to create you. What do you do? Take that step. You wake in a world of pattern. You are surrounded in the golds and palm leaves of your home. Now, one thing you all must know is that every legend arises from silence. Every song begins with quiet. And that's where you guys come to. 
now here's how we character katunggalan creation in Go Batman uh, is now very it's a slight life path system right? or the path of glory or the glory path as we like to call it right so the first thing you'll be doing is you will be rolling your parents great cultures now the your parents don't have to be like your biological parents it can be like the people that adopted you or took you in or you know people in general that you consider your parental figures right but in general you will have to right so you roll your first great culture and then you roll your second great culture this is important to sort of determining um your parents professions and it, it's important later on. so um yeah, bring up your character sheets and why don't all of you roll 2d10 for me and i will tell me the two different results what page is uh this part on wax um this is on page uh every legend arises from violence is on page 118 118 gotcha cool cool, cool. Mm -hmm. there it is two and ten Two and ten. Whoa. Is that Danielle? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So Danielle, your parents, your father is Gatusanon. They're from the Gatusan Rajanate, which is the mandala inspired by maritime Hindu Buddhist kingdoms. And your mother is inspired is uh, from Bae which is the oldest kingdom in the Isles, and they're inspired by the first kingdoms of Southeast Asia. And the ones that have, like, Chinese, like, influence. That's very cool. Now, uh, very often, you will come from the, uh, your own culture, which is the important part. Your own culture will come from one of your two parents. So since you're old two, you have to choose which one you're born into. So you can choose either Bae, or you can choose Mikusa. Good. Right? Um in in uh in my obsession with replaying the same character uh i'm gonna go with by it <laughs> oh my god oh yeah Pamir returns. we might be making pamir again that's so funny we're we're, we're remaking pamir he 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 exploded yeah so, exactly you know, all the gods are giving him a second chance the 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 god wax is giving him a second chance <laughs> pamir pamir was so good that Danielle made the Pamir too. That's how good Pamir is. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's the sequel. Oh, yeah, that's the sequel. why you're wearing yellow. Yes. All it's right. A... Yeah, yeah. The golds. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be very proud. This is the first thing I've worn to to be in character ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, by by the by the end of this stream, everyone will be like cosplaying the characters. Yeah. All right. Start adding pieces. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, can someone else tell me what their parents' great cultures were? I'm oh, sorry, like what 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 you rolled with your D10s? I'm calling on Matt. Uh, I got nine and six. Ooh, so nine means your father's from Bae. Okay. And six means your mother's from Akai, the mandala inspired by the sultanates of Southeast Asia. Ooh. Love it. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, I'll go. I got a seven and a ten. Seven and a ten. Your father was from Virbanwa, uh, the kingdom that is inspired by the colonized states of Southeast Asia. And then 10 is your mother or some Bae. Easy. <laughs> Very Bae is having a big featuring in this. <laughs> Which is good because actually it's it's pretty rare to have Bae characters as far as I know. So uh how about Shadow Spirits? Yes, I got a four and a one. Awesome. Your father is Kamutan, which means so um Apumbu Kid, right, is the polity inspired by the like indigenous cultures of Southeast Asia. Um, Apunon means you live around the great mountain Apu, Apu Dayao, which is like 
our Olympus, right, in Southeast Asia. Now, a closer um, allegory would be like the Mount Meru or Mount Mu. And then Kamuton means you're from the communities that are spread across the archipelago that are still allied with Apong Bukid. So Kamuton lets you be like very culturally diverse. Like you can make up your own culture with Kamuton. So that's your father. Your father is from Kamuton. And your mother is from Gatusan. You're from Gatusan, actually. Very, very cool. Very dope. All right. Um, awesome. So uh, before we before we head on, actually, this is the perfect time. Your parents, each of your parents, had their own lives, had their own lives while they were raising you, right? And while they were raising you, it is kind of tradition in the Sword Isles to... Um, you know, pass down your profession and the, the, the things that you know, right? You, this is everything in a sort of analysis is, is inherited, inherited knowledge, right? So with that in mind, um, if you look at your character sheets, one thing you should know is that all of your skills in your character sheets should start at one, right? So there's 16 skills in all split into four, right? The royalty, the freeman, the worker and the wise folk right so all of those should start at one that's that represents like a baseline capability to do any of them and then one. sorry what was that which ones it's under the uh skills section the skills the section yeah. um yeah so um as opposed to the the elemental system we now have something that's a little more like culturally uh, rooted into like workman skills. Hmm. So all should have a one. At the start. Yes. But we'll yeah. increase them as we build our character. Good. Awesome. All right. I, I, I told you guys to do that because <laughs> your inherited knowledges from your parents are actually the first few boosts you'll get for to your skills. Um, so let's start with Julie. So Julie, you rolled a verban menu, right? A verban yeah. menu father let's and a violin sim mother. Okay, roll two d twelve for me. Two d twelve. Ooh, big die. Mm -hmm. We got a a twelve and an eight. <laughs> hmm. I see. All right. <laughs> Your father. Was a wizard. <laughs> oh, <Whoa. laughs> Verban Wenyo, well wizard, <laughs> yes. otherwise known as a, Verb... a terrifying exorcist or something. <laughs> yeah, Verban Wenyo wizards know the invisible names of the little gods, cultivating gardens where joss arise. They brew elixirs, memorize spells and magic formulas, and little prayer books defacing the ashen star in the process. So this is a very wizards are very rebellious against the status quo religion. Ooh, um, I like that. I love yeah. that. So you get a uh, plus one to your ritual, psalm, sensitivity, and occult. Everything under wise folk. Cool. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, for everyone that doesn't know, Joss is the local verb and menu term for Diwata or Deva. Um, a bit of a cool like etymolo etymological thing. Joss, I think, I think in like Bahasa Indonesia, I think also means God. Because it comes from Portuguese, like Jos, which is cognate to Spanish, Jos, D I Y O U D I Y O S, which is the term we use for God as well. We use Jos for God, Jos or Josa. Um, yeah, and it comes from Deus, right? It comes from Deus, it comes from Jaws, which means God in Latin. But it, but it sounds All like right. a little bit like a J there. So we say yes. Dios. We say Dios yeah, you... in Spanish. Dios, right? Yeah, exactly. We 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 cut it and it's just straight up. Like, it's still spelled D I Y O S for us, but but we say just just. Wow. All right. Cool. And then, uh, your mother, you rolled an eight for your mother. Uh yes. Oh my god. <laughs> well, what is this affair? Your mother. Your mother was a solar concubine. Solar concubines are priestesses that profess undying faith to Indira Suga, who is also said to be the Devarani, of whom the Sang Pamigat Kalangitan, who is the leader of Bae, is a physical representation of. 
due to this, you um, also, uh, their mother serves as a lover to the Sampamigat. And the Sampamigat grants them immense spiritual capability along with scholarly training for administrating polities. I think I'm building a magic character. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy priest time. You're, yep. Your father was a side hoe to, <laughs> to the Sapphic Bae. All right. He's probably plus one... okay with that. Yeah, of course. He gives plus one to poetry, occult, wrath, and control. Okay, cool. So everything under royalty. Damn, this is cool. Nice. <laughs> All like right. Dirty, dirty little Banog. This is uh, this is a very regal character. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 becoming royalty this time. <laughs> Everyone's gonna look at you when there's like a social event. Everyone's gonna let's let's ask the royalty. All right, let's move on to shadows, uh, parents. Um, you rolled, um, a Kamuton father, and a Gatusanon mother, right? Yes. All right, roll, did you roll 2d12? 2d12. Hold on. I can right now. I got so enthralled. <laughs> um, all right, d12. I got a 12 and a 10. Ooh. 12 and a 10. Oh, you guys are rolling so high. Like, what the hell? All right. I know, it's going to be a little slow later. <laughs> <laughs> if only it mattered, yeah. Um, your father was a honey hunter. Honey hunters yes. travel deep into the forests to collect honey, a common sweetener item that every royalty in the Sword Isles loves. A common love mead is a honey mead known as Kaburawan. So you have plus one to your ritual, toughness, grace, and sensitivity. And more important is you'll get a plus one to your social classroom later on down the line. Because honey hunters are kind of like a... Like they're high in the pecking order of social okay. classes. Yes. Can you say what my plus? Oh gosh, what my plus ones are again? Ritual, toughness, grace, and sensitivity. They're uh, they're in different sections, uh, not all under one. Yes. Yeah. Grace and sensitivity. Okay. This is just great. Shadow's real life job, cottage core, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> honey from bees <laughs> to spread to the land. Oh, 12 and 10, right, Shadow? Yes, yes. All right, your mother was a Gatusanon peasant, indebted to a Datu and must serve, farming their lands and fighting their wars. Peasants have their own house within the community, but offer part of their labor to their Datu. So you have plus one to your grace, sensitivity, observation, and judgment. Very, very humble character as opposed to um <laughs> the very royal rebellious character we have with Julie with Julie. Yeah. Love it. All right, did you did you get those extra points? Yes, I did. Awesome. Let's move on to Matt. Uh Matt, your father was Bainense, was that right? Uh Baye, yeah. Yeah. And then your mother was Akayu, right? Mm -hmm. So uh roll me 2d12 and let me see what your what the professions are. All right. I've got 11 and then mm -hmm. 8. Okay. Your father was an architect. <laughs> oh, so Binance yeah. architects channel the spirits of the land, allowing them to create grand monuments that reach the heavens while respecting the land reserved to them by the ancestors. Art and architecture in the Sword Isles are almost always due to the artist wanting to represent something grand from the spirit world. And many artists are possessed by said spirits to create vast edifices. Naturally drawn to ruins of jade and lacquered stone, which gleam with bright turquoise as they're activated. Sometimes within burns lost songs of the Kadanai people, whose histories are inscribed upon imperishable sound. So you have plus one to your art, ritual, psalm, and observation. And then you also have a plus one to your social role, your social class role. Oh, fantastic. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm pumped. All right. And uh, your mother was from Akkai. She, you rolled a 10. Is that right? Uh, 12 eight. and 10? Uh, uh, 11 eight. and okay. 8. 11 and 8. Oh, oh, my God. Your mother was one of my favorite things in this entire setting. A lunate knight. These were faithful vassals and knights of the Sultana herself. Not just conscripts created to make a standing army. They're the men at arms. They answer to nobody but the Sultana, and thus they enjoy the benefits of being a vassal to the Sultana. 
They own royal compounds in Jambangan. Uh, they gain part of the weapons and spoils from Grand Lunar Conquests and the ability to partake in the Sultana's table when they feast. More importantly, they could marry any of the nobility in Jambangan and raise their own stature, securing their descendants' future. Wow. It is a profession that many long for, especially in the Bloodthirsty Sword Isles. So yeah, this is the badass. <laughs> yeah, this is Lunate's Knights and Lunate Knights like the closest thing to like yeah, cavaliers, right? Chevaliers and paladins and stuff like that in the setting. Um, and we very, very, we very like me and, and Dylan very deliberately put it in Akai, which is inspired by Sultanates and Islam. Um, mm-hmm. and like inspired by Arabic culture as well that arrived in the Isles because like the, the ideas of chivalry arrived in, in Europe from pre-Islamic Arabia, right? Like chivalry is furushia in in like arabic um and there was already the the ideas of chivalry and court romance came from arabia and it came from arabia to spain and then to the rest of europe wow all right cool awesome and let's head on over to danielle uh your father was bainense right oh wait was that your mother Okay, okay, cool. Um, can you roll me 2d12? Yes. So, I have a 6 and a 12. 6 and a 12. Awesome. So, your your father, which is from Gatusan, was a Balian. The priest, sorcerer, shamans, the channel, the performed concord, the channel and performed concordance with the greater beings of nature. Mm. Very, very important people. You gain plus one to your poetry, resolve, psalm, and ritual. Poetry, yes. Resolve, yes. Psalm. Psalm. Oh. Psalm. Yes, and ritual. Good. Awesome. Okay, and um, what was the second roll? Twelve. 12 for your profession, by an end's profession. All right. Your mother was a mercenary, skilled warriors that paint art with their weapons. Many by an end's mercenaries practice the blade song, weaving magic with sword. They scour troves of manuscripts and scrolls of ancient martial techniques. Not all mercenaries are kadunganan. Many are beholden to their datu or have no honor or are not as great in violence as the honored ones. For the most part, they are blades for hire. So you have plus one to your might, grace, judgment, and observation. Good. This is being That's this, pretty cool. Um, this is developing into something very fun. Yeah, I love. I, I love like, um, we didn't do this last time. Like this, like inherited, this inherited family traits. Such a good idea. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I got it because I was reading through Artesia and Glorantha, and I was like, "Oh, these are like my main inspirations for the setting as well." So, I should, I, I should remember <laughs> to fix that part. But yeah, yeah. If if anyone wonders, one point five was the main reason for one point five was to finish fixing up like the narrative parts of the game, um, because the combat part was it's all good. Everyone has has fun with the combat part. All right, dope. So that's everyone. Awesome. Now let's. <laughs> uh, now, you guys have to find out what social class you guys were born to. All right. So everyone rolls a d six. Now before we head on, we head forward. Actually, have you guys chosen what your own great great culture is? From the two of your parents's. I'm thinking it. I feel like throwing a little Verbanwa into the group is like throwing a little bit of like, throwing a little bit of like uh, spicy sauce into everything. Like it just automatically yes. becomes loaded. It changes the recipe yeah. for better or worse. <laughs> uh, I will say having a Verbanwa in the group for Sword Devil specifically, very spicy. Love it. 
All right, so we have Verban Menyo for Julie's character. How about Shadow? Um, I was gonna go with the uh, um, Apunan. All right, awesome. Uh, Apunan or Kamutan? Which would you prefer? Mm. Kamutan is the one that's like across the aisles, while Apunan is the one that's like by the mountain. Oh, okay. Mm, prob- but they're they're both Apo Bukit. Yeah. Probably by the mountain. Yeah, let's go with by awesome. the mountain. Cool, cool. Uh, how about Matt's character? Uh, I was thinking, and I might, I'm sorry. I'm going to be saying things wrong a lot. The, no uh, worries, I, no worries. Akaye? Akayu. Akayu, Akayu. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. An Akayu and a Verman one. In the same war, man. I, I love it too Perfect. because your mother was a loon at night and mine was a solar concubine. Let's go. <laughs> that's that's the type of shit that I live for. <laughs> sun moon, sun moon aesthetics. Oh no. And then Pamir's like, all oh, your glitter is mine in the background. <laughs> Pamir is the star, right? The He's star. A, yeah. Yes. Sun moon star. And shadows yes. the bees. So, he thinks he is. Shadows the bees. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, and how about uh, Danielle's character? Are you going with Bae? Yes. For your great culture? Awesome. <laughs> of course. All right. Everyone roll a d6 for their social class. Shadow and Matt, you both get plus one to that roll. Okay. Oh. All right. So Julie got a two mm-hmm. on this Verban one oh, man. social class roll. <laughs> So, so the social classes of Verbanwa are very, um, they come from a lot of Marxist economic theory. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the the one role is disenfranchised. Number two is peasant. Number three and four is working class. Number five is middle class, and six is aristocrat. Or, as, as we, filthy islanders like to call it, the bourgeoisie. Mm-hmm. So, um. <laughs> Since you're on the two, you're uh, you were actually born into the peasant class. You are a wow. peasant farmer. You must be from the provinces. You are downtrodden, and taxes are too much for you. But you begin with a chopping sword. Like write that down in your items. Yes. Yay. So I was a secret child, probably. <laughs> yeah, you're oh, a no. secret child. Perfect. I love it. And now you're seeking revenge and shit. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Awesome. Um, you have plus one to all the worker skills. Yep, I'm very balanced. It's great. And also keep in mind you have a chopping sword. So in this game, um, there's there's really no like standardized currency because that really only exists within like the the major metropoles, right? Mm-hmm. So how we do like buying stuff in Gubat Banua is through bartering. So having your items is actually important now, so that you can give that. Right, like, oh, I have a chopping sword. Would you like a chopping sword for your, uh, uh, for three batches of tea, like stuff like that? Right. I am the sword that chops, yeah. not the sword that cuts. <laughs> um, how about Shadow's character? I so I, I so I get a plus one to this roll, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, I rolled a six. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You Fancy. are you are royalty. Queen of the You're bees. related <laughs> to the first degree, either as a child, nephew, brother, adopted, or some other contrivance of family politics, to the chief and lord of your town, village, slash city. You enjoy greater privilege, but the burden of etiquette and noblesse oblige weighs heavy on you. So you have plus one to your all to all your royal skills. Yeah. Um, and how about Matt? So I had a plus one to it, but I I rolled a one on the die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, well, so we both so rolled two. Fun. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are also you are a bondsman. You are of the debtors and workers. You are peasantry, farmers and warrior servants that fought for your chief and lord. So you have plus one to all the worker skills. Okay. Shadow, you get plus one to all your royalty skills. And for Danielle, what did you roll? That a make, five. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> this is just for me. We're just remaking. It's, it's just it's right. it's happening. This is just happening. I think Destiny. for me, it must be played again. 
it's 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 this <laughs> i i that's that's a that's a very philippine reference because the word for fate in filipino is well in tagalog and in bisaya is palad which also means palm because that's how our that's how until now actually we still divine by reading the lines on the palm mm. um, the palm reading so fate is like palad or kapalaran okay magino oh you are magino oh you are a bi aristocrat known yeah. to be the most pompous of nobles among the sword <laughs> isles it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> Having taken after the bike hands, which are the the Chinese inspired culture that they've traded with for so long, they have grand wooden long houses decorated with gold and are built like pagodas. They wear long silk gowns, sarongs, complex golden diadems, and walk upon wooden sandals because their feet are never to touch the ground. They have <laughs> servants carrying their parasols, and they are carried upon palanquins either by elephants or by their own servants when they speak they speak in lilting tones and they always adhere to the golden web tapestry how did you Many get golden and parasol in the same sorry this That's is crazy so sick oh my gosh <laughs> many by aristocrats also have kadanai ancestry which is like the old 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 uh like indigenous people in bai yeah, this all is right big. so you have so you have plus one to all royalty skills so that's art control poetry and breath a mere two. <laughs> a mere two. Awesome. Dope. All right. I just realized I forgot to make both of all of you roll what your parents look like. So can both of you roll D6 for me real quick? Um, this one's my a lot of people like this part because for many various reasons. Do we wanna wanna roll um, high? Because I got another two. <laughs> you, you roll it twice. Oh, okay. D sixes? Yeah, two D sixes. So it's a one and a six for me. That was like right. for <laughs> for Danielle. All right, your father was Kawayanon, right, and your mother was Pakan, which is the winged people, the eagle people. If you want to make Pamir again, you can just pick Pilandakan. That's all the same. That's all good for me. But uh, just for the for the uh, services of like creating a character. Um, when you roll a folk, you roll for your father's folk and your mother's folk and what they look like. And then it's going to be very diverse, as always. Um, but you can take like your how your character looks like from your parents. So if your parent was Kawayanan and Pakan, you can say, oh, I'm like a Kawayanan, but I have like, a, you know, bird like hair, like feathers for hair, stuff like that. Then you can write Kawayanan with, with uh, feathers for hair in your folk section. Right, mm. it's really just for aesthetics completely. Um, Love it. Yep. Uh, none of the folk are pure. There are no such thing as pure blood because every folk has ancestry with other folk. That is the truth of all things. Some kawayanon have cat ears. Some pilandokan have snake eyes. Some pakan look like naga. Some iro iro are very lupine, while others look close to kawayanon. Embrace diversity. This is the truth of the world. Okay. Um, how about Julie? A uh, two and a three. All right. Your father was Ido Ido, and your mother was Kamikam. Oh my dog god! You're a dog. You're a, yes! you're a dog cat. Uh, oh, oh, my god. oh my god! Priest cat. So, <laughs> very often, um, you can you can make your character look like Kawayanon, but with dog ears and cat tail stuff mm -hmm. like that. If you want to, that's it's all completely aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, I love how Julie's controlling. Is emo like emotions, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, my brain yeah, is just so, right now. It's great. Yeah, so if you want to make like a dog, I think that's how I met cat. you. You were playing a cat. You were playing a kitty. Oh yeah, I played a in a in a seventeen person battle to the death in D and D. I played a. Uh, I, were playing... I played a. I played kitten. You um, were playing a kitten, yeah. They were yeah, a, you would do this. A, you a warlock this of story. the darkness, uh, who whose body count is uh, not insignificant. Awesome. That's great. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you should definitely do that. Yeah, if, very often people are just like, if they get like Kamikam, they're like, oh, I can make like a Mikote from from uh, FF14. I was gonna like, say Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, FF14, the Mikote. I love yeah. that. That's the most popular Where? race in the game. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. Shots. 
Everyone loves the cat girls and the cat boys, apparently. Uh, oh, there was this one time. Here's a, oh, a super funny thing. I ran uh, this game for Renfair, right? And I made everyone make characters. And then they were both like, the two players that played FF14 were like, uh, question, we can we can make like our own folk, right? I'm like, yeah, this is completely prosthetic. Like, can we make like a bunny boy? Like a like a Viera? A male Viera. Yes. And I and I was like, yeah, of course, sure. And then I was like scrambling for like what's the closest thing to a rabbit in in like mm. Southeast Asian like counterparts for rabbits, because that's not exactly like native to us or local to us. Mm. And then later on I found out in Taosung, which is one of the Moro indigenous people here, the South, they're, they're the ones that inspired a lot of um, Akai, actually. In Taosug language, the term pilando, right? It's it, it was it's mostly used for mouse deer, but it's also used for rabbit. So technically, the pilando can can look like rabbits. So very yes. funny because they they look they look the same like like shape wise like pilandokan and and rabbits look the same shape wise uh, love it awesome you could be okay like a jackalope. yeah exactly <laughs> so how about shadow's character i got a 5 and a 4 all right so your father was pilandokan dear folk there you go dear folk <laughs> and your mother was Laksaman, which are the monkey folk. Ooh. So that's up to you how you want that to look like. You can look like Sun Wukong if you want to, stuff like that. I know that was Matt's previous character, like yeah. <laughs> Southeast Asian Sun Wukong. Okay, and then, what do you call this? How about uh, Matt? Yeah, Matt, what did you roll? I've got four and one. Your father was Lakshman, while your mother was Kawayanun. <gasps> oh, snap. Hmm. Another monkey boy? You're another monkey boy. Hmm. Maybe go. it's time for Son Goku 2. Electric. Right. <laughs> you know, show them how it how it looks. You know? In in Javanese, the 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 name for, for Sun Wukong in Javanese is Son Gokong with like a G H O K O N G. So Kong Gokong. calls heaven. The heaven spirit technique. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh snap. Yeah. Very, very cool story. Anyway. Next is since you know what social class you're born to, um, everyone roll me a D8 because we're gonna find out what your homeland is, what what actual town you were born into. Now, um in, in future like and future like supplements for the game and future products for the game i'm planning on like releasing like more like homelands for each of the cultures because like the d8 is just like a really small slice of what uh, potential cultures or subcultures there are in Kubrick one awesome golden eight um uh, golden eight all right for bae you're from eight you're from Bae. You're from the metropolit the metro the you're from the metropolis, the great city from which the Song Family God's power emanates. Which you're you're an aristocrat from Bae. You 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 must be the the snootiest <laughs> to ever live. The great city from which the Song Family God's power emanates. It is a land of pagodas and stupas, of holy golden temples and strangler fig complexes, influenced intensely by Baikan culture, and has a large number of Baikan refuge enclaves within. It is a trading center. Merchants and traders of Bae bring their items brought by Baiku to the rest of the islands north, especially to trade with those of the Gatusan and the myriad islands that's east, before returning to pay back those Baikan eight to nine moons later. Some Pamigat Kalangitan's stone and jade jewelry shimmer and glow with the glowing green patterns, betraying their ability to use the sacred ancient Katane artifacts. You begin with a white parasol and a me. plus one... <laughs> And plus one to your judgment, control, poetry, and ritual. I can't believe plus, judgment, control, is... poetry, and ritual. Correct. Yeah, you know how like in in science there's the concept of carcinization, like everything Return evolves into a crab. Yeah, then we have a we have pamirization. Return to pamir. Everything just remember to return to pamir. Yeah. 
<laughs> so wild. If mortals exist long enough, they all slowly become the mirror. <laughs> this is the opposite of what we want. We want less aristocrats. Um, I rolled an eight. You rolled an eight. Let's see where that's from. Uh, Virbanwa, right? Virbanwa, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Virbanwa is different. You, you roll a d6 instead oh. of a d8. All right. Let me roll yeah. a d6. Uh, that time it's a one. One. You're provincial. You live in the provinces outside of the city. Love it. You all once had your own cultures, and truly you still retain them in one way or another. But you have been thoroughly erased by Virbanwenyo imperialism, and you are conditioned to follow the city's lead and the city's lead only. You can speak Virbanwenyo. You start with a worthless item. You can <laughs> tell me what that is. And you have plus one to all their worker skills. It's funny because you get like loyalty yeah. skills and shit, but like your your character is like. <laughs> I'm so intrigued. We call that anak salabas or anak ng kabit. Anak salabas translates to uh, child outside, right? Um, which means like you're uh, what's that? I think bastard like is the closest term for in in like English. It's like. Bastard is yes. you're, you're the the son of a mistress. Uh, oh my god! Oh Secret my god. love child. I'm the bastard. Wow. It's me. Yeah. Amazing. What's left? Okay. Um, you get uh plus one to all your worker skills. Yep. Got it. They're all three. I'm illegitimate child, pala. <laughs> okay. Akai, uh, that's for Matt. Can you roll me a D8? Yeah, I got a four. Ooh. All right. You're from Nakshuarga, an ancient polity that once stretched its in influence across Jamie and Kulisa's arrows. That region of the Isles fraught with warring, even with the continent. Naxawarga was principally invaded by the ancient Mahajola, which spread Anuvaran thought and religion into its shores. So Anuvaran is kind of like uh, like the Buddhism of this game, right? Oh. Which then expanded to the rest of the Sword Isles through missionaries and traders. Now, Akai has claimed it for its own, but its kings, called Rakan, are powerful and refuse to be cowed and prey upon their more ancient gods to eventually fight back against the Sultanate. You can speak Nakan, Start with a necklace of god idols, and you have plus one to your ritual, psalm, control, and poetry. That's just the coolest person. You're like our paladin or something. <laughs> yeah, it's about to set you guys straight. Oh my god. Awesome. Okay, uh, and how about Shadow's character? Uh, what did you roll? I got a four. Or as well. Okay, you are from Barahanda. You come from ancient Barahanda, once the border of all things, the greater extremities, the nexus of all paths that eventually lead to Apu. Here, those willing are taught in the ways of connection, of unity, of concordance. They achieve conjunction by creating connections between those that would otherwise be enemies. They shall unite the world. Yeah. That's so cool. That's, that's such a big responsibility. Guardian of the paths <laughs> and the bees. Damn, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're, damn, we're you're bees. right. We we will have bees. <laughs> what are what are the the roads of the many trees, but just a giant beehive? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's dope. Okay, and then. What was next? Okay, okay, okay. Last one is each of you are going to roll another D12 to find out what your... Oh, wait, not yet. Okay. Uh, both, uh, all everyone rolls D100 twice to find out uh, your life events, otherwise known as yeah. what trauma did you get <laughs> while go. you were growing up? <laughs> oh, my favorite yeah. part. <laughs> Daniel grew out of the soil two weeks ago. 
<laughs> that's too soon, Julie. That's that's that hurts. It's a while ago. What are you talking about? You're a plant boy. It's okay. <laughs> Grew up with the floor. Plant boy. <laughs> that, that must be traumatic. You think, his, you think his head came before his feet? Just had to spend a little while just as Pamir head. <laughs> a flower blossoms and it's Pamir's face in the middle of it. <laughs> oh gosh, do you ever, do you ever play uh, Green Fandango? No. You should. <laughs> Green Fandango is amazing. Well, and the thing about Green Fandango, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but the thing is that it's the land of the dead, right? It's, mm. it's all inspired in Day of the Dead. Um, and, and the way they kill dead people is by shooting flowers on them and they sprout. Love it. So that's, is that your new, is that Pamir 2's ability, Mario Witch abilities, but there's a flower explosion? Sprout, sprouts from his eyes. <laughs> Horrifying. Casual. Casual. All right. Have you, have you guys told your life events? I want to read them out. You said how many, how many D100, D100, one? Two, two D100s. Okay, I got a 66 for the first one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and a 14. 14 for the second? Yes. All right. So your first life event, you were very young when this happened. You fought in a skirmish against a demi-giant with a warrioress Harina, whom you're now indebted to. Very cool. So that's nice. That's neat. <laughs> Not much. Uh... I, had, I had something like this last time. Really? Oh my god! Yeah, I was indebted, indebted to a demon or something. Ah, that's so cool. Gone. That's so fun. And, and the fourteen is... is Maputra, an Akayu battle veteran who only fights with a split spear. Taught you how to fight. You are indebted to him because of it. Ooh. 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 Interesting. How about Julie? Have you rolled a D100? I have. Uh, we got a 58 and mm -hmm. an 87. 58. You committed the atrocity of butchering, but you were under orders. You were under orders. Verbanwa conscript. No. And, <laughs> and what, was your, what was your second one? Uh, 87. 87. A weaver named Asina went up to you with a request. Silk from deep woods to crafty clothes that she dreamed of. You granted her request and she granted you a beautiful cloth in return and you're indebted to her because of it. It's my connection to royalty. I'm dressing like it even though I've been oh, so cruelly separated yeah. from it. Exactly. <gasps> How about Shadow? I got 27 and 30. 27. You were blinded or hobbled in some way due to a fight you thought you could win. Casual. <laughs> oh, no. The fight against Sawuk just did not go that well. And uh... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> did you, did you just say glory. casual? I can't believe you yeah. just grabbed with haha skill issue to, to the... <laughs> That's so funny. What's even funnier is your second life event. You broke an important bond with someone you cared for. You regret that you can never mend your broken relationship. Banog's mad that you got Pamir killed. <laughs> and that's why Banog's no longer here. He doesn't so now, oh no. no. So now he's mad. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. now he's yeah. mad. Drama. Not my love. <laughs> <laughs> How about Matt's character? Uh, first one was a 90. Second one is a 67. 90? Wow. All right. 90 says... Reactions. <laughs> yeah. Your parents cannot accept who you are and sold you off to be a debtor to someone else who took you in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. Walks looking in horror at his own creations. <laughs> so the... deep. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. That's trauma for you. 
What was so your Bob second Johnson rule? Art. Six, 67? Yeah, 67. You were the apprentice of a blacksmith, but someone killed your master, forcing you to wander alone. Did you know who killed them? Ah, oh, poor guy, dude. You were sold off and your master got killed. Forever alone. <laughs> My gosh, no! <laughs> and then he still acts like a knight and everything. Oh no, he's the he's, he's so the baby girl. <laughs> this is fine. All on the path to lunar glory. Uh, yeah, my legs. Oh, my soul! It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> this is all in service of my divine striving. Oh. Awesome. All right. Uh, according to the glory path, what happens afterwards is your cultural keepsake. What do you keep? So this is another two D twelve roll because each culture has a twelve starting cultural keepsake. So let me know what you guys get. Roland. D12. I got two tens. Two tens. That just means you get two copies of the same item. And that's you have two hardwood shields. <laughs> Very funny. You can like surf on wow. it if you want, you know? Like, be like Link from Breath of the Wild or something. How about Julie? Uh four and six. Four and six. On a four you have a tea kettle, and six you have a piece of a river god. Sick. Wow. It's the coolest oh sentence I've heard all day. <laughs> uh, how about Shadow? I, oh my god. I got an 11 and a 6. 11 and a 6. That's pretty high. 11, you have a dragon embroidered magenta cloak. Mm. And 6, you have a blade shattered sword. And you got drip. Shields. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at everybody with so many awesome yeah. stuff. He just got two of the same. <laughs> New Pamir is scared. He's made of plants now. I mean, New Pamir, New Pamir has like a parasol in it and everything. So, how about Matt? Um, I've got a one and a seven. One, you get a grand silk headdress, and on a seven, you have a colorful saddle. Ooh. That's awesome. That's just cool. Yeah, you're very you you're very dripped out right now. Let's go. Yes. Dripped out of my mind. Supreme <laughs> saddle. <man. laughs> yeah. Supreme headdress. You fused with Bagwis, and now you are <laughs> right. You are dressed like the Sarimano. Yes. <laughs> I'm dripped out of my fucking mind. All right. Now, um. Have I made you guys roll for your own profession already or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. It's time. Now we write, we roll up what your own professions are. Um, these are not your parents' professions, but they might be, depending on the result of the roll. So everyone roll me just a normal D12. I hope it's not my per parents' profession after they abandoned me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a four for me. Four for Julie. Okay, you you are a border warrior, dude. Oh Love no, it. you're you're the Night's Watch. Border warriors are protectors of Corregimientos. <laughs> border settlements fortified by stone walls stood on the fringes of Birbanueño territory to both keep back the waves of other settlements, as well as create anchor points for expansion. In the borders, you are exposed to most of the other cultures of the Sword Isles, but the priests are more strict in their hold of power and punish others for the smallest deviation from religious norm from Sampalataya. So I you have plus one to your might, sensitivity, grace, and toughness. Might, sensitivity, grace, and toughness. Okay. I also figured mm -hmm. out uh, I def my crime of butchering was definitely against the river god, um, and that's why I have a piece uh, of <laughs> you're, you're connecting the thingy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh. Might sensitivity, grace, oh. and toughness, right? Yeah, might sensitivity, grace, and toughness. How about shadow? So, <laughs> I guess you got the same one, didn't like, you? I got, I got a twelve. Oh <laughs> my god! Let's go! Yay. You're carrying on the the yeah. family legacy. <laughs> yeah. You are a honey hunter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Badger. 
taglay na Honey Hunter. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, if, if you got you guys didn't know yet, in pre-colonial Philippines, hunting down honey was kind of like a prestige job, kind of. It's like, it's a bit higher than normal hunting. Very cool. All right. I got, um, three, I got a three. You got a three. So, Danielle, your profession is you're a painter. Painters in Bae have combined textile weave patterns and designs with the technology of paintbrushes upon palm leaf manuscripts, creating vast pieces of art made to exalt the unseen spiritual world. Painters are commonly thought to be a prestige profession. So you have plus one to your art, psalm, observation, and grace. Wow, artsy Pamir? Who would have thought? Wow. Yeah. Um, the only weird thing is the shields. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he paints. Paint he palette. paints it yeah. on the shield. Yeah. Oh my god! It's his, it's, it's his uh, yeah, it's his palette. Yeah, it's his palette. And how about Matt? What's your profession? Five. Five. You are a storyteller. Oh, that's so nice. Ooh. Storytellers hang around the parts of town where most people lounge about and they and they tell stories high and low, great and small. People might love or hate them for it, but at least they give the storyteller <laughs> food and sustenance. You gain plus one to your art, psalm, control, and tenderness. Aww. Aww. Oh my gosh. My favorite skill, tenderness. So tender. It must have really hurt when your blacksmith oh my God, wait. died. Right? I was, was going to say, is... is, is... Are you stoic or are you or are you like, you know, you actually share your emotions through your stories, you know? I don't know. Like, okay. <laughs> so so uh Wax did say that I'm either loved or hated for it. So I could just be like, my parents abandoned me. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god. My family you're, died. You're the, you're the bar. Lunar fly. Batman. You just right. sit at the bar and you just anybody who sits down next to you, you're just like you buy it, it, buy it to go. Buy it. Man. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. That's so funny. <laughs> for for everyone else's like um reference, tenderness is a worker skill. And it's your ability to empathize and connect with the feelings of those around you, to find the best way to connect with them and to speak softly, gently. In the Sword Isles, every word is a thorn, a prick, a compelling spike. Your words will not mend, but perhaps it need not heal, simply soothe. High tenderness means you will always have the right words to say to quiet burning fires, but your heart bleeds at every thought, at every word. You bleed profusely for others, both a boon and a bane. Forgive me, dear heart, there is no solace from love. And oh. low tenderness means you are colder, your words strike and bleed like a sword, and you are dense to the plight of others. A stone dead, struck by lightning, not in wrath, but in ignorance. That's the make, it makes sense. I have one. <laughs> one tenderness, Pamir met the build. All right. So many X's. That, that, that could explain some of it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. That's so that's actually really funny. I can't believe Pamir has more tenderness. All right. Um, we're almost we're we're almost done. Can you guys believe that? It's time for your third trauma. Can everyone roll D100 for me? Oh, just, you can't just Great. say that. <laughs> Wake up, kids. It's time for your third trauma. Wake up, kids. It's time up. for your trauma. Tiny trauma hunting. 93, 93. 93. All right. Uh, for Danielle, a witch cursed you and you lost a part of yourself because of it. Nicolas, a boy, a lancer from Birbanwa, offered you escape from the witch and you're indebted to him because of it. Just debts. He has so many debts. <laughs> yeah. I think you can afford them. <laughs> you, don't, you don't care about them because <laughs> your tenderness is one, so... <laughs> Yeah, you can probably afford them. Awesome. Okay. Uh, how about Julie? Eighty-one. Your D one hundred. Eighty-one. Oh my God! The great king, Punong Raja Batara Ambasi, the leader of Gatusan, saved you when an Akai raiding party tried to burn your village down. Do you still have a sense of obligation to him? Nevertheless, you're indebted to him. You are indebted to one of the major players of the setting. Oh, the 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 
and he he looks like a tiger, right? That's kind of like his whole yeah. His he's whole he's thing. a he's tiger folk, yeah. He's like half tiger folk. He has tiger blood. And, and I'm a, a cat dog person. This is so sick. Oh, this is um. I'm a I'm a rare <laughs> rare. I'm a I'm a fire dog telling a stand which has wolf people and cat people. So I'm a going going to that in my brain. Awesome. Oh my god. Dope. Um. How about shadow? I got a five. A oh, five. Wow, that's that's going to be like one of the earliest life events I ever wrote. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, really? <laughs> you were sent out on a venture that your lord knew only you could handle. You lost something when you returned. What is it? And you are indebted to Alho Kadlaunon for helping you return. So Alho Kadlaunon, for reference, for your reference, he's the sword poet. He's the sword poet. <gasps> He Ooh. is the bisexual disaster. Yes. And uh, the OC, the, the legendary exalted OC of um of Dill, of yes. our art director Dill. Is that the default sword poet art? Yeah, it's he so is good. the he is the sword poet of iconic. Oh my gosh. So good. I think this is I think this is how I lost my vision. You saw an attractive <laughs> person, and your eyes said, "I, I yeah. give up. This is the last. This is the last sight I see." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so much bisexual disaster I can be. <laughs> How about Matt's character? What's your role? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm gonna give you one of my favorite life events okay. just so you can have it it's a it's a very it's a very cool one um and i wrote it pretty late into this Ooh. okay cool so i'm gonna are you ready matt yes <laughs> <laughs> you get a star fell in an open field one night you went over there and swallowed i was moving it. castle what did you get Nothing good, I'm sure. <laughs> oh no! House moving castle. <laughs> Trauma combo. The house right? moving, the house moving <laughs> castle reference. Yes, <laughs> it's the in in Tagalog. It's tahol, <laughs> tahol. Yes. Tahol. Oh awesome God. that's your third trauma everyone has completed their traumas <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on to your fates <laughs> which is my favorite part of this game uh, everyone roll a d10 and let's see what you guys believe in. Oh, that's a one. You are faithless. Yes. You are, character is faithless. You reckon to no god, no being, no greater heart. Though you respect the laws of the land, your faith is not personal but societal. You follow superstitions to be protected before respect, not because of devotion. Ooh. I killed the river god and I liked it. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> How about uh, Shadow's character? I got an eight. An eight. You are Sampalataya Batala, a pluralistic faith common in Bae that worships Batalang Mai Kapal, God the Creator, and is heavily influenced by Ashinin and Anuvaran practices. So Ashinin is a, a bit more like Hindu, Hinduism mm. inspired. Mm particularly Shaivism and Vaishnavism. It recognizes a retinue of servant gods and any other god is not above Batala, who is the supreme oversoul, as he's called. Okay, awesome. How about Matt's faith? Uh, I got four. Four. Okay, you are a devotee of Pooh. A Nitu that puts forth sacred mountains as the most holy sites above all, and Apudayao the most sacred as the pinning thing of Gubatbala. It is a sword that skewers all that you kill your cosm together. Pu faithful always perform pilgrimages to Apudayao to offer obeisance and commune with the sleeping god within, who is also known as Apudayao. Pu is the universal force, while Apu is the ancestor and the personified version of this. Ooh. And finally, what did Daniel roll? Tres, three. Tres. I understand that. <laughs> Bayanense Anito. Oh, you're the complete, the complete Bayanense package. Uh, 
you are you're... I get one for the price of 10 for the price of one exactly <laughs> Anito that believes that every soul reincarnates and that the most enlightened souls become Himayanon the glorious ones they do not need to worship gods but do so uh, but do so to accrue merit most importantly in Dirasuga who is sometimes known as Mahawaira Himayanon the primordial Buddha awesome wow. okay so those guys are your fates Guess I'm a very complete character right now. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see. Let's that, see. Let's that, see. That laughter. That, uh, okay. That evil <laughs> laughter does not. No, don't worry. No. <laughs> you guys won't. You guys won't die during character creation or whatever. Don't worry about it. All right. uh, <laughs> of course, you're <laughs> Oh, you guys! I'm coming. already dead. Yeah. So. This this isn't traveler or whatever. So, as a kadunganan, your conviction is the primary reason why you live and fight. It will help you hold on, help you dictate what you want to do. An integral thing about convictions is that they are liquid. They are water. They can change during play, if it makes sense fiction. So right now, everyone will get a one conviction. Everyone roll a d12. Let's see what you guys get. We'll, oh. we'll pick from the list. And then you guys can like change it. Since Six. this is a multi-session campaign or adventure or cycle, we will be um uh we will explore uh points where your conviction might change. Uh, which will be very interesting. So my what favorite die are we rolling again? D12, D12. Okay. My favorite reason for a conviction change before that happened was because this one guy was like so down bad for this other Katunganan. Hmm? And then they had to they changed conviction just for him. So cool. Anyway. Aww. Um who rolled the six? Yes. Uh was it Danielle that rolled the six? I rolled the six. Awesome. Cool. Danielle, your character fights for honor. <laughs> <laughs> what life is there to live if not a life of virtue? Why wield a sword if not to uphold one's principles? Why live if there's nothing to live for but base animal instinct? That's your conviction. How about Julie? Well, love. Your heart, my heart bleeds enslaved, and my soul is a lake. My passion courses like the rivers of Gubat Banwa for the one that holds my life in thrall. My tears flow in devotion. Damn. This can be like to a person or like to a concept or to a community, right? Yep. How sure. about Shadow? I got seven. Seven, revenge. What goes around comes around. The circle isn't broken, and it brings with it the spike of judgment. The most oh. wholesome character, and then suddenly, revenge. <laughs> Feels all a ruse. You killed my and... father, not the fact that I <laughs> And how about Matt's character? Eleven. Knowledge. There's a future that we all can see. One only needs a light bright enough to see it. Walk with me and let us attain wisdom. Let the path we forge be the right one. Wow. Damn. That's pretty crazy. Okay, cool. I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> um, now, this, this, uh, this part doesn't have like randomization, so you should think about it as we... And then you can fill it in as we go through the rest of the last few parts of Kadunga and Creation. Um, so these are your passions, right? So finally, finally, we arrive at what shall become the final days. Tell us, O Kadunganan, O night of stars and love and light, what do you fight for? What will you defend with the ardor of a dying dog? Your passions are arguably the most important aspects of who you are. You always have three, as in the Trimurti or the Trikaya. Define them in quotes. These are the beliefs and ideals you hold dear, though unlike convictions, they are not the reason for fighting, but rather reasons to live. If conviction spurs you to commit violence and to stay the path when you would otherwise be broken, passion convinces you to keep living in spite of constant violence. So what are they? So some examples are, none love durian more than I, beauty is something not everyone sees enough of, all violence must be a last resort, so you should always write it in like quotes, right? 
So as long as I can speak, I can spur others into victory. I will never serve a king. All slaves shall be freed. Reverence to the gods must take primacy, lest the world destroy us. I hate being alone. I will never want to be alone. <laughs> How many? Three. You'll write down three. So you can you can think about that as we as we realize your characters with the last bit of important thing. And this is a very, very new to 1.5. Um, in 1.5, we don't have the heart, sword, and shield anymore. We we straight up just I I made a Southeast Asian fantasy zodiac horoscope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so these are called your Rashi. Rashi is the uh, Sanskrit term for it. Rashi means sign, uh, but we can also use it as astral sigil. So every folk is born under a particular omen. Many of them are astral sigils or rasi, and so are kadunganan as well. In the Sword Isles, these ideals arrived with the arrival of Ashinin missionaries and Agma Damlag warrior merchants, who brought with them the ideals of Jyotisha, which is astromancy, which integrated the local culture's use of the sky for sailing, hunting, traveling, and divining future events. More local terms can be found further out of Mandala centers. Mananala in Baenense, which means dealer of stars. Manalagna, or diviner of stars, in Gatasanan. And Kivafefa, which is star dog chaser in Vuyu, a Kamaton town. So to help you round out your character's demeanor and personality, roll D12 thrice. Each one corresponds to your solar aspect, your lunar aspect, and your sidereal aspect. So, um... In in IRL horoscope, this is your sun, moon, and rising, essentially, right? Four, two, two. Awesome. Okay. Uh, before we move on, I uh, there's a last bit of thing here. It says, finally, you and the situations where folk find themselves are the final arbiters and molders of their personality. Material conditions are more impactful than the say of the stars. The sages will always say, the pull of the earth is greater than that of the sky. Remember that you will die. So, um, Daniel's character is two four four, four two two, four two two. Okay, so your solar aspect, right? Your solar aspect defines your overall attitude and spirit, your drive, your inner nature, the ego that binds you to everything else, right? So on a four, your character is Pinamaskan. Your 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 solar aspect is Pinamaskan, which is the ceremonial spear. You're emotionally mature, intuitive, and artistic. <laughs> sweet emotionally mature sweet and almost limitless emotions <laughs> you where their hearts on this what are you are you saying <laughs> Pamir is not emotionally mature <laughs> wear their hearts on their sleeves and take care of those they love all right so if it was just a solar aspect all. it would be it would be pretty one dimensional but that's the reason why there are other aspects so your lunar aspect is your your lunar aspect defines the things unseen in you, the deep wants, the shadow, the things you cannot allow others to see. Remember that those you love must see all of you to love all of you. So um, you rolled an, the Anowang, which in real life is the Taurus. Pinamaskan is, is cancer in real life. Uh, in Anowang, the water buffalo. Um, so your lunar, your lunar aspect is that you are creative, indulgent, stubborn, and loyal. You delight in seeking earthly pleasures and emotional security. Hmm, I see. Uh, so this is your this is since it's your lunar aspect. That what that means is that this might be what you want. It might not mean what you have. Yeah. So you might want loyalty, emotional security. <laughs> um, and you can have the same uh rasi for for like. To, uh, for more than one aspect. So your sidereal aspect is also anuang. Your sidereal aspect defines how you carry yourself, your vibe, so to speak, the energy, the energy you release into the world, how you connect with others, and more. Sometimes it is an even more important aspect than solar. So your your vibe is your anuang. Your vibe is that you are intelligent, stubborn, and loyal. But just that's your lunar aspect. What that might mean is this is all like a farce. You sh you 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 present yourself as someone that's emotionally secure, but you're actually really not. <laughs> you know? It's what you want, right? The shade of it all. So yeah, okay. Uh, how about Julie? What's your rasi? Yep, I. I'm the most Libra individual ever. I got seven, seven, six. 
So, okay, so your solar aspect is Katimbangan, the scales. Bon, yeah, they are Libra. Bon vivants, critical, avant-garde, stylish, relationship-oriented individuals basing decisions on how they're viewed by others. Prefer to find balance in life and situations. So your lunar, your solar and lunar aspect are both Katimbangan, but your vibe, your your sidereal aspect is Tambalan, the healer. In real life, this is Virgos. Thinkers, diligent and factual, uses their calm nature to gain deep clarity on matters, fair-minded and slow to anger. Hold on, guys. Was getting the river god killed actually that bad? Let's think about this. That's my character now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let's the weigh the pros placement. and cons. Putting everything in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about Shadow? What okay. did you Okay, so... I, uh, depending on where you're from, this is either very auspicious or uh, a warning um, because I rolled straight fours. <gasps> oh, wow. You're the most pinamaskan person ever. You're ever. <laughs> super emotional. Um, that's pretty <laughs> rare. Having So pinamaskan in real life is cancer, right? And cancers are usually known for their emotion. They're emotionally uh, centered. So... You know, cottage core, cottage core <laughs> character. I'm so cancer. I'm so pinamaskan. Ooh. <laughs> it's perfect since it says uh, sweet and almost limitless emotions. You know, very cottage core. Wear their hearts on their sleeves. What if you're a what if you're a shojo protagonist? You know, like kiss, kiss, fall in love. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes. Oh my god, instead of flowers, I'm not giving out bees. Here's your little protector <laughs> bee. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh and for Matt, what did you roll? Two, ten, three. Awesome. Okay. So your solar aspect is Anoang, the water buffalo, the creative, indulgent kind of thing. Uh you delight in earthly pleasures and emotional security. Your lunar aspect is the makara, the crocodile. Hard workers, diligent, contemplative, and reflective, known for putting too much effort into things they want to achieve. Since this is your lunar aspect, this is like the hidden stuff about you. Like maybe you're lazy and you want to be hardworking. You know, like <laughs> and uh, you got a three, right, for your um yes. rising. Oh, sorry, sidereal. That's the kalis. Also, makara in real life is the Capricorn. Um, Kalis, the sword, conversational, filled with multiple perspectives, enjoy tangling with complexity, quick-witted, and fast communicators. In real life, the Kalis is the Gemini. It is so cool, goddamn. <laughs> like crocodiles and swords and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is epic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So just write those down. And you're Rasi. We're almost, we're basically done, but here's one thing we almost never get to do in almost any of the games we run, and it's Warband creation. It's everyone gets to make their Warband. If you head on over to page 228, which has the the very, very legendary picture of the pink cat girl. With a stand, <laughs> that yeah. Everyone, yeah, with the, with the stand that everyone goes crazy over. Um. Uh, which is which was made by Multocat, great artist, obviously. So war bands are the parties of Kadunganan that wander and serve in Gubat Panwa. War bands are consecrated with the blood compact ritual, the act of bleeding into wine and then everyone drinking from it, all their bloods intermixed. Those in the blood compact must serve each other as if they were the closest of brothers with their livers connected. <laughs> all right. Okay, so um, it says here, think of how your warband got together. A common answer is that the warband was formed under the particular chief you serve, and that is the norm of the Isles. Blood compact serving their chief faithfully is how chiefs create connections, establish power. However, some Katunganan choose to be wandering warriors, holding allegiance to nobody but to each other. This offers less protection in the violent world of Gubat Manwa, as the protection and comfort of being in a community is a luxury most people will want to afford. Now, to make it fun, 
one of you should roll a d10 for me. Do it, Danielle. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I vote Danielle. <laughs> Danielle, it's Thanks. your time to shine. Is that a four? A four. Oh, perfect. So your warband nature is wandering warriors. Oh. This warband nature is increasingly becoming more common in the Isles as war intensifies and mercenarism has risen. Your Kadunganan have sworn a blood oath to each other and now travel the Isles with nothing but a boat to your name. Your warband has a boat and five horses. Name oh. the boat. It is right now your only possession. It is rowed by a number of paddlers, each one having chosen to gamble their life supporting you, or perhaps you own their bond since birth. Each of you are well acquainted with one of the paddlers. So that's like a free NPC for anyone to make up. It's Akasha. <laughs> Having Those a boat. Are all people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Yeah, we could do that. Having a boat in the Sword Isles means you are relatively well off and you can travel as freely as you can. The boat is also considered a point of light until it is not. So that's a very specific wording. Okay, quick question. Yep. This boat. So it's big enough for all of these people and our horses. Is that what I heard? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your the horses in the sword Isles are smaller than the than the ones that cavalieros would would bring around, right? Like they're like mm -hmm. Southeast Asian horses, right? So, like little cutesy horses. You can ride them, of course, Easy. but yeah, okay. But horses are pretty big, like in barter items speak. Uh, so they're like you have you have a bit of of trading power right now. Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys should make up a warband name. <laughs> so some examples are Iron Owl, Quicksilver Falcons, Falling Star Swords. Let me make one. This feels like Julie territory. The Golden Parasols. Wow, I was about to say Pamir's bitches. Pamir's <laughs> posse. <laughs> Pamir and the Pamirs. Pamir and the parasols. That's so funny. Oh yes. Oh my god, that's like what Pamir calls our our war band, but that's like not its official name. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> actual, yeah. actual, like going in the opposite direction. Uh, we could go like. The, the golden bullets the 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 shine the shining stars I don't know there's a lot of like celestial things here with sun <laughs> star moon and bees right yeah thinking oh the, we the astral emissaries which is the name of my friend's band astral emissary <laughs> we're gonna That's get pretty we're cool. gonna get uh, copyrighted. Cease and desist. <laughs> let, let us do this. I got you a job. We are allowed to steal your band's name. <laughs> the barter. <laughs> Celestial. Sexy. Oh, sun's Gold Sun Fury. Fury. Sun's you know, uh, I like uh, Sun's Gold oh. Fury. Oh. Yes. All right. We'll go with that. The Sun's Golden Fury. Love Why it. Why not? Well, cool. that's a badass warband name. Awesome. Okay. Now we move on to the final part of Gun and Gun Creation. It's been fun, guys. Uh -huh. but it's time for what is awesome. potentially the most important part of Gubet Bandar, and that's violence. The demon of life. Stands before you, bulging eyed, ogre fanged, stardust skimmed. Pick up your weapon and you scintillate with rosy gold merit. Choose a discipline. You gain that discipline's philosophy and inflict violence, yet you do not start with any signature techniques. So I'm 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 pretty sure all of you have looked around and have an idea for what your for what your discipline is. As always, I recommend an even spread. At least one sentinel and at least one medium. Those are pretty good. Um, but uh, what discipline did you choose, Julie? Oh, we're starting in Legend Zero, though. We'll start, we'll start at Legend Zero, and then I'm going to Legend up you guys. I, 
I would love to base mine off of Matt's decision so we can round out the party. So can we start with Danielle? Uh, and Shadow, okay, who so... might be sticking with similar characters. All right, yeah. cool. The thing is, uh, and, and, and just just like trying to coin some early Thunderbolts here. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> just kissing <laughs> some butt before the game begins. in character creation. <laughs> exactly. Oh just, just getting a few Thunderbolts before the game starts. Uh, well, I was I was thinking I was thinking Pamir died, or or became or became flower dust, uh, and this was probably something that either made the gone god very very happy or made the gone god very very angry like wh why would you do this like wh wh why like literally like the situation was already resolved you you exploded yourself out of dramatic for dramatic reason <laughs> um, so the way i see this is i either keep going the barrel witch bath which i was loving or he's banned from barrel witching like uh... like god goes no you you i gave you a toy you broke it now you now you do something else <laughs> the tigpana is another that's trap suitor that's dope. bow and arrow if you want to like side grade that would be very funny that would be very very <laughs> very funny that's pretty cool. I love that. I love that like concept. That's that's perfect. And then maybe you can eventually work up to to getting the gun gods like um favor again. And then that's when you can start gaining Boreal Witch techniques again, you know? I would love that. Uh I I will I will go with Julie's suggestion. I will go with what's the Tigpana. what's the name? Tigpana. It's the archer. Tig yeah. Sorry, Tigpana, Tigpana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like now you Tigpana. start like you had a you had a massive Fantastic Gumbrella. Now you get a bow and arrow. He's not gonna be happy. I'm sorry, Pamir. I apologize it's for that. It's it's that thing where where your the character from the first game is so strong that when they make a sequel, they have to power him down. So they do that by like stripping <laughs> off his weapons and then giving you a shitty ass bow bow and arrow. <laughs> Very good. I I've been playing a lot of uh, uh Legend of Heroes: Trails in the Sky. And they do the nice. opposite. Like every single time that you go into the new game, like they're all level seventy five. It's like now they're like hyper hyper powerful at the beginning of the game. Like good, uh, this is dope. good. Awesome. All right. So you grab Tigpana. Tigpana are the archers. They are Apumbuki. They're from Apumbuki disciplines. They're from Apumbuki. Um, they are sharpshooters. They are embodiments of minor enlightenment, manifestations of the wind, arrows of harmony, born from the watchtowers. So your discipline philosophy is sniper's perfection. You have 7 HP, 3 speed, 3 jump, and plus 1 to your bravery and faith. All right. Your critical distance is every tile 4 plus away from you. Which All your range attacks. Uh, that's page 340, the one I'm reading from. Awesome. Yeah, your critical distance is every tile four plus away from you. Anyone who's played Monster Hunter Bow would know what critical distance is. <laughs> so every tile four plus away from you. All your ranged attacks against those in critical distance cannot be evaded and hit on a five plus. Additionally, when you make ranged attacks against fighters in lower elevation than you, your range increases equal to the elevation difference. Nice. Awesome. So you have your ranged DPS. How about... Um, so was was that Shadow that was also keeping in tune with Are we Talim? reprising Talim? Okay. Are we, or or is this like Talim revised? <laughs> I yes. I think we're I think we're going Talim revised. And and it just has to do like we have such a good lineup, right? And like flowers could work again, right? Give me give me my death flowers and talking to ghosts again, right? But mm. But what if? <laughs> <laughs> what if? Thunderbolts. Um... Thunderbolts. 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 <laughs> Look, ta uh, uh, we, we have a slightly different background, right, this time. Um, emotions are very important. Um, and also, we have, we have now uh, been blinded. 
And I really think that had an effect. And so I think being rescued by the sword poet themselves uh, oh. really swayed Halim to now become a sword poet. Oh my god, that's oh. perfect. I'm a little, I'm a little scared so of the cool. level of complex for this, but I, I, I have, I am more experienced at combat for glory now, so I feel like I can pull it off. Sword poets are not that. I, I, in, in my opinion, you're doing your job if you hit people and debuff them. That's, that's what you do. You're, it's, it's, it's like you have a lot of options, but it's not a complex game plan. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, technically. You play the flower bully, and that's technically more complex because that that has you thinking in fields, right? Mm. Well, sword fair. poet has you thinking in confusion. So, awesome. Okay, sword poet, Ang Sundang Balaknon, master of song and sword, protector of the living world, preserver through epic and poetry, bearers of the holy word of rhythm. Let's go. Your discipline philosophy is flower tongue. You have 10 HP, 4 speed, 2 jump, and plus 1 to your posture and resilience. At the end of your rift, taunt all enemies and burst 1 until the end of your next rift. You have overwhelming defenses, which means you reroll the 8s against all enemies taunted to you. And when a taunted enemy attacks you, you can confuse them after the attack. And I hate confuse as a as a status effect. It is one of my, one of my most hated status effects. But it's <laughs> so fun. It it's sounds so super fun. brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it is the it is Pokemon. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know Julius has dealt with confusion as well because they have a war speaker in their <laughs> in their in their game. The 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 one on YouTube. It wasn't even uh, the one that. <laughs> not just the confusion. It was the oh, I make one ally, one enemy attack another enemy on their turn. I'm like, what? Yeah. Okay, okay. I guess everyone just loses yeah. a turn. <laughs> oh, it's the taunt. Yeah, <laughs> wars. That's why war speakers have like shit defenses and hp <laughs> like it's so easy to pop them yeah. but as long as they're keeping away it's yeah they're good when an enemy taunted to you makes an attack that does not include you as a target you may slide them one tile and then you confuse them after the attack if they're already confused you hit them immediately so <laughs> you keep punishing people if they don't attack you and if they do attack you you confuse them so you know <laughs> poor guys <laughs> um uh there is a there is a funny little um reference to flowers over the lumat in the inflict violence lore part of sword poet it's a poem that says let the petal on this chapter close with a contented sigh flowers over the lumat brightness in the sky so uh <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a ooh foreshadowing <laughs> for the for so the excited. upcoming uh, module or uh, upcoming narrative scenario. Awesome. How about Matt? This is then. If if I if I may, Matt, like we have a tank and we have a ranged DPS, range DPS, and they attack with oh, faith snap. and bravery respectfully. That frees us up a lot. Oh goodness. Okay, I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll be honest Fuck with you. Up. I mean, if you uh, want to lean into Sun Wukong stuff, the Heaven Sphere is all about jumping on top of people with a big stick and like swinging it around and like doing trickery, like switching places. I'm with people. down. Let's go. <laughs> Heaven Sphere, yes. awesome. Yeah, that's the one that has a straight up reference to Sun Gokong. So, Heaven Spears are renders of heaven, denouncers of king, of kings, cloud surfers, ever alight javelins, attainment of minor enlightenment. They're very easy raiders, actually, um, and they are uh, like in the lore. They're like anarchist martial artists, right? So your oh, discipline philosophy yeah. is unbound. You have seven HP, six speed, five jump, and plus two to your bravery. You're one of the fastest uh, disciplines in the game. Whenever you move, you fly for the duration of that movement. And then at the uh, end of that movement, you deal one hit to all enemies adjacent to you as you slam down to the ground, but only once per rift. So you can't like, you can't like, you know, keep moving and hitting mm -hmm, everyone. Mm -hmm. So dumb. Additionally, and more importantly, you're immune to any damage from falling, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Oh, <laughs> snap. Awesome. All right. Remember that once you take on your uh, discipline, you you take uh, both the discipline philosophy and the intact violence. So you like, copy paste those. Okay. All right, Julie. I think I found mine. It's up to you now. Yep. Um, What's yours? So I want to go medium. I think that fills out the party. Whoa. Um, I, I was thinking, I was originally thinking Blade Weaver. You know, it's already a Virbanwa class, but then I'm kind of like, we have three people in melee with the Heaven Spear and the Sword Poet. Standing in back next to Pamir, healing people, I'm thinking Mender. Um, oh my god. Which also fits the very royal background, like Dad was a priest. Um, the the Mender is all about like their incantations that set people aflame, like throwing potions to heal people, and even like blocking attacks, which I'm thinking could be like a piece of the river god that flies out like water bending to shield people or something oh, like that. Um, awesome. I also love the contrast between like I am part Iro Iro, part Kamikam, part dog, part cat. Like I could go lean into it and go like feral death dancer, but like what if it's the opposite? Considering I'm like a balanced personality, like I have like priestly robes and I have like the animalistic ears, but my fighting style is like Naruto hand jutsu, and <laughs> setting people. Oh, on fire. nice! <laughs> I think that's the vibe. Awesome! That's amazing. Then there, are healers of sword, the traveling doctors, masters of the convalescent art. That is perfect. You also have a parasol. Uh, your, dis your discipline philosophy fucks me up all the time. It makes you... It, does, it, re it really does make Menders the, the premier healers of this game. So you have 8 HP, 4 speed, and 1 jump, and plus 2 to your resilience. All healing you give to, all to allies heals an extra plus 1, and then you heal 1 back. After healing an ally, you may rush 1. And finally, when you rally, which you can only do once per violence, one ally in range five also heals the same amount that you did. So you just, you just keep on healing, healing, healing. Um, and the most important part there is the rush one after healing, because that's free movement. And free movement is so, is so, you know, it's so good in, in Goombat Mana. <laughs> okay. I, I wanted to try this discipline too. I'm excited. Perfect. All right. So with that in mind, I am going to say that the four of you have been warbanding around, causing a ruckus across the Sword Isles for a good harvest or so, which is like 12 uh, moons or 12 months, right? Um, and what that means is that you, you've, you're you not legendless anymore, you know? You're not no legend, no legend. You're not no legend anymore. You have legend. There is some gold to your name you are at legend one so when the ganon lets their legend grow by one they gain two points to add to their skills oh wait before sorry before we before we actually get into that your prowesses should have a spread of four three three and two right so four, three, um three and two yes so if you guys remember the four combat stats are your prowesses that's uh, bravery, which is your physical attack, resilience, uh, sorry, faith, which is your magical attack, uh, posture, which is your physical defense, and resilience, which is your magical defense. Right? So keep that, just spread that around. I'm keeping in mind your discipline. So Heaven Spear works with bravery a lot. Uh, uh, menders have a signature technique that lets them add their faith to their healing. Um, uh, Tigpana are really good at at, like bravery, but they're also good at faith as well. And um, sword poets are primarily faith based as well, like for their attacking stats. Just keep that in mind. That's your starting stats 4332. This is important because when you grow in legend, right, you gain two points to add to your skills. However, no skill can go above 10. All right. So this is your flex skills. This is what you call your like specialization, right? So skills are different from your prowess. Prowess are your combat skills. And then the skills are like the, the 16 skills you have that let you interact with the world. Um, you don't actually have just plus two. You have plus six to this one. Um, so you can spread that around. But remember, none of them go, none of them really goes above 10. Okay. Wow. So we can add, we can add six points across skills, did you say? Yes. Wow. Across your skills, yeah. But right now we have uh, 
we 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 set up a base of four, three, three, and two. Yeah, that's for your prowesses. That's for your prowesses, which are combat stats. Your okay. skills are like your drama stats. That's that that's different. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we went back to the skills because yeah. I've already made all the all the modifications that my background gave me, so I can I get add new stuff. Yeah, so you add six more uh, points to that. Okay. So you can you have a bit more of like control over your destiny, defining who you are. Uh, let me know if you want like the descriptions for any of the skills because, um, the They're... writing I've made for the skills are like my favorite writing I've made for an RPG mm -hmm. so far. If we're um, <laughs> if you're looking at uh the, the character sheet that I sent to all of you, also this is um Faye's uh character sheet, which is like very Ooh. easy to edit. And if you hover over a skill name, yeah. it should tell you what it is. Also, which is yeah. quite fun. Like a short version of it. Yeah. If if Wax wants to read out any of his favorites, though, please. <laughs> my favorite is wait, which one's my favorite? They're they're all my favorite. I I really <laughs> like like poetry is one of my favorites as well because Poetry is your ability to read and tap into the intricacies of epic and song, of subtext and context, of poetry and metaphor, of secrets and lies. The Sword Isles is filled with people that speak in riddles and twists. High poetry means you can interpret what people say in the subtext of their actions, figure out lies, and even be good at lying yourself. But you are prone to reading too much into things, and sometimes even you can't figure out if you're telling the truth or not. Well, low poetry means metaphors and so metaphors and songs and epics and stories and remember everyone is a story are indecipherable to you so it's like it's like a mix of insight but also like actual poetry because that's how it works in the sword Isles. like poetry is how you connect with other people in the sword Isles. so that's why love it some i mean i'm i'm looking at the chat like some is pretty good too cuz because um, the traditions of the Sword Isles are mostly kept in the songs that they sing, right? Uh, writing them down is a pretty recent innovation in the Sword Isles. So that's some. I've, uh, uh, res yeah, go. I've invested heavily into occult ritual sensitivity and toughness. Those are all my fours. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think I got a nice balance here. I got uh art four, control three, poetry six, wrath two, occult one, psalm three, ritual three, sensitivity one, beauty four, oh. grace three, my two, resolve two, observation three, tenderness one, toughness two, judgment three. Tenderness one. So beautiful. Funniest. Funniest build in this one. <laughs> oh, I really like toughness actually, because mm. like perhaps the most important virtue in the Sword Isles, Kadunganan are those assailed by fate and blade at every turn. Wounds bleed and break you. This is Gubat Banwa after all. With high toughness, you might be stronger than a boulder, steel shatters upon your skin, or you might grit through all things and always come out on top. You might be knocked down, but you always end up standing, and you all but you always end standing up. Too much toughness, however, and you might end up dead. You can only get knocked down so many times before your bones break and give out. Low toughness means you are like reeds upon the riverbanks, easily swayed, easily broken, easily burnt. But perhaps you are pliant. Perhaps you will not get hurt. But remember that to inflict violence is to be inflicted violence upon as well. So toughness is like if you're too tough, you're prone to like shattering, right? Like that's that's the thing with like, um, if something is pliable, it can, it it doesn't shatter. It might scratch, but it doesn't shatter. Yeah. Well, if something is like super super like tough, it doesn't scratch, but in, if you poke it the wrong way, it just shatters completely, right? So right. That's like the the poetry behind it. The writing in the writing in this in this system is superb. Fucking, yeah. Wow, <laughs> thank you. I had to read poetry. 
<laughs> I mean, not not against my will. I like I like poetry. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, are you guys done with adding your skills? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I because we're Legend 1, do we get a plus 1 increase to one of our prowesses? Was that Yeah, it? yeah. Okay, cool. Yep, we're going there. So you gain, on top of that, you guys gain plus 1 to your prowesses, which is your combat stats. So, like, the Sword Poet might want another point in Faith, but if they want to be a good uh, defender, they might want to raise their posture, for example, because, you know, melee attacks or, or magic attacks. Um, everyone starts with five honor. Just keep that in mind. You get plus one as you rise in legend. So everyone technically starts at honor six, unless Pamir did something stupid and <laughs> lowered all of your honors down. Your your de facto leader. Honor six. <laughs> yes you guys are all honorable right now remember if you guys get defeated or anything your honor will go down Just keep that in mind finally and this is the important one all of you get two signature techniques from any discipline of your choice a very 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 common um, suggestion is to just grab the first two signature techniques of your current discipline right so if you are um, a Heaven Spear, just grab Gokong Volt's Heaven and Sky Rave. Just grab those two. Like, that's enough. Because um, if you do that, if you get the first two techniques of your discipline, you do unlock your Enlightenment, which is your super special um, passive effect, right? Uh, you can only equip one Enlightenment at a time, but you can equip any Enlightenment that you've unlocked. So for example, if you have two techniques from Mender and two techniques from Heaven Spear. You can be a Heaven Spear, but with the Mender's Enlightenment, which lets them heal automatically when a fighter falls to stagger. Oh, nice. So that's where really, hey. yeah, a lot of like build crafting comes from the fact that you have like a single passive that's really strong and can can define how you build your character. Mm -hmm. So if our Heaven Spear grabs Gokong Vaults to Heaven and Sky Rave, you immediately get your enlightenment, which is heaven render. You gain plus two to your jump, which means you have seven jump now. And oh, yeah. once per sound, you can rush for free when a fighter starts their rift, right? That's free movement immediately. Sick. And finally, when you fly, and you do, since your discipline philosophy lets you fly whenever you move, mm -hmm. your next attack becomes overwhelming and relentless. Overwhelming means you. whenever you roll a 10, you roll another d10. Mm -hmm. And relentless means if you roll a 1, you re-roll that again. Okay. Sweet. All right. So right, right now, we should be uh, adding the signature techniques from our current discipline. Yes, yeah, so you just grab the first two signature techniques of your own discipline. Um, there will be a point where you guys will rise a legend during the campaign, during the cycle, during Sword Devil. So um, you guys get to be a, a little more flexible and you can retrain later on. Unless you're like Julie, who's been playing all the disciplines and you have an idea of what to mix and match. With, I'm just uh, saying those Brusalian techniques on a mender, I can blow stuff up real easy too. <laughs> yeah, you can grab Siga immediately and, and, and provide long range um, protection. But then I lose out on. Uh, there, there's the complication, right? If I take. If I end up taking. Um, if I continue down the mender path, I could get my liberation sooner, which uh, is like my ult. <laughs> Yeah, your limit break three, your yes. LB three, yes, it's called. Which in the case of Mender is heal all allies to max HP, even those that are defeated, and I must make an offer to the ancestors or suffer the ire of heaven. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, copy pasting those techniques how we all feel in everybody perfect good great that's perfect because i i i am 
the only thing I was not very, I I didn't pay enough attention was the prowesses. Oh yeah, you have plus one to your speed. Uh, to your prowesses. Sorry. To all of so your you all of them go no, one no. up. No, you have one point that you can spend to raise one of your prowesses by one. Okay, so so let me just get this straight. Um, as a base, I have four, three, three, two to distribute however I want. Yes, correct. Then I get the extras that I get from my discipline. Yeah, yes, that's right. And then one extra because of my legend. Yes, correct. Awesome. Crank up that bravery. Yeah, that's what I'm Oh, thinking. no. Last time, Don't... I was very, very squishy. Pamir was very squishy. Um, though the bane of my existence, a high defense stick, but not. <laughs> no. <laughs> so good. Uh, it says here your critical distance is every tile four plus away from you. Is there anywhere I can register this? So I remember. Uh, that's that should be under your discipline philosophy. Uh -huh. uh, section um, okay. of your character sheet. You can oh, just okay. copy paste it over there. Yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. All right. Okay. With that, with everyone choosing their signature techniques, it is with a heavy heart, I have to say, that is the end of Kadungana creation. And we end it with a little song. Not not song, but like a poem. So we herald then the great burning stars, bearer of the smokeless flame of the future, the lords of light and the thundering kings, the relentless tsunamis, the blistering winds, the burning eyes, the heaven seizers, the messiah slayers, the reincarnators, every peasant a king, every king a god, every god a soul, every soul a storm, and every storm, a kadungana. So as we zoom out of your, at the end of character creation, um, you guys like open your eyes and you step out of the tomb of resurrection. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> at the end of character creation, spawn point. It says, the demon is defeated and you find that it is you. Claim your prize, your heart. Will the world know your name. Remember, Kadunganan, only those that dare raise their heads are decapitated. So we zoom out from your warband. Uh, we're gonna put the four of you onto a onto a warship, onto a Karakoa that is sailing briskly towards the island of Nanka, which is where the sword devil takes place. And as you're going there, your Umalagad, which is this slowly um like it's this it's it's this slowly slinking tiger right uh javan tiger that finds a cliff overlooking the ocean sits down and then stares at your incoming karakoa this is your umalagad kalagan sarimau which translates to tiger soul and as he looks, his eyes, his eyes are disconcertingly too human. And he remembers the words, the, 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 the beginnings of the song, right? And it says, The world stands at the precipice of death and end, virtue and vice. It waits for a great blade to cut through it and change it and create the world that must arrive. The new world must arrive. It will arrive. And for our new world to arrive, the old world must first die. Now cut open the new world from the womb of violence. Be as sharpened devils, demons of righteous fury. Let the sword devil fly tonight and let it slash the god of the world into a thousand thousand islands. The beautiful idyllic life of Palani is in danger. And perhaps you, Kadunganan, are the only ones that can stop it. Welcome to Sword Devil, it says. 
Yeah. Play that intro music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it zooms out and then title card, then you know, sword Gubat Banwa sword double like that. Slash yeah. appears across the screen by second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's Katungan and Creation. And next session we will be starting our little tromp through the island of Nangka. The islands of Jack Foods. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's our Kadongan and creation. Oh, wait, last thing before we go is do you guys have names for your characters for your Kadongan? And so we have a name to the face. Well, I don't beard. remember. My name. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the same joke. <laughs> um, I was looking up uh, words that could mean like tranquility or calmness for my mender. Um, is Kalina. K a l i n a w like a feasible name, or is that K K Kalinao? Kalinao. Uh, it technically it's it's pronounced Kalinao, oh, Kalinao, and it comes from it comes from Lina, which is like, um, Lina is like, when something is Malina, it's it's you can see it clearly. Mm -hmm. So when Kalina or Kalinao, and it's like serenity because you can see it oh, properly cool. or stuff like that. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like you need uh, the term lina, uh, the term like means like often when you have like you don't have your glasses. Oh, I can see Nisha Malina but when you when you <laughs> wear your glasses. Oh, I can see it's Malina and stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. Is that a is that a feasible name for a person or is that weird? Of course, of course. Kalina. All, Kalinao. Kalinao. all feasible names. Kalina. Nice. How um, about yeah, Matt? Uh, would this work? Uh, Magisa. Magisa? Is that uh -huh. M-A-G-I-S-A? -S yeah. Uh, okay, that's technically uh, pronounced Magisa. Is that what it means? Is that what you're going for? Yeah, Magisa. I... It kind of means you're alone. Magisa. Yes. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's what I was so, thinking. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Isa is Tagalog for one. So mag isa means you're the only one. Here. Okay. Great. Would th would that work as a name? Yeah, of course. Okay. It's very cool. sad though for those that can understand your, your name. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so sad. How about are you still going with Pamir? Uh Danielle? Alright. The the legend lives on. And how about Shadow? So I'm thinking with um, I I'm thinking with Talim's change in how and and how her life's going right now, uh, the tragedies that she has experienced, um, I I think she would she would add an addition, uh, to her name, mm. and I was thinking that instead of just Talim, it would it would be. Apa Kalim. Apa. Like A A P A W. Apao Apao. Apao Talim. Oh, okay. Uh, where did you grab that that term? I grabbed it from the suggested names <laughs> in the book. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Perfect. The okay, okay, okay. Names. So technically, uh, it's technically pronounced apao. So apao talim, and apao means overwhelming. Like when water oh. overwhelms, uma apao. It's apao. So apao talim, overwhelming blade. That's what it means. Apao talim. That's so cool. Your name meant blade in blade. the first uh, Shadow of the Steel too, and now you've like grown into that destiny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So there you go. There you have your Kadungan and Kalino, Apau Talim, um, Magisa, <laughs> and the great and exalted Pamir. Awesome. Pamir revamped. Question Is this going to be months, years later? Um, After Shatter the Steel? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like a two two years after Shatter the Steel. Good. Ooh. Good. I love that. Good. All right. 
Okay, thank you guys so much for joining us for Kadungan and Creation. Uh, that was the new life path system of character creation. And I really wanted to make it feel like it was play in its own right. Because yeah. everyone loves making Borbos, you know? Um, and now you have an entire, an entire story like attached to your characters that you know you can you can really get into the headspace. Of. All right, I hope you guys had fun. We will be starting Star Devil next session. Prepare for violence immediately because that's how we do it in Gubat Manwa. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Catch you then, everybody. Take it easy. Rejoice. The glory of combat. See ya. Bye. Ooh.